My instruction said that Steve was going to welcome everyone back, but clearly you all have worked with Steve before and you know that instructions are of limited use when you're dealing with Steve. So thank you very much everyone and thank you Steve for not being the person who did this. So welcome back everyone. <laughs> um, to this panel um, is what drives my bus. Because now we're ready to talk about integrating services under managed care, a trend with potentially significant benefits and challenges to all levels of the healthcare system. As you've already heard today, access to behavioral health coverage and treatment services is of such great importance to individuals who are involved or what we like to call justice involved. Integrating mental health and substance abuse treatment with somatic health services under the same roof or within a provider network can support a more efficient, comprehensive delivery system with far, far better health outcomes. There are, dis di there are different and additional benefits for the justice involved populations. Um, the coordination of Integration allows providers to manage the care of the individuals who are often reluctant at, at all stages to visit a clinic, let alone navigate between multiple offices, multiple professionals, multiple state agencies. Remember, these people are just in or out of the criminal justice system. And I always like to remind healthcare people when you go and you interview someone in jail and you go, you know they don't seem like they really, really want to talk. You have to remember that the last instructions they got from someone was, everything you say I can and will use against you, and then they handcuffed them and took them away. So you, you kind of have to understand that's the hump you got to get over before you really get real information. Um, there are many of us here today who have taken steps to learn new languages. <clears throat> Let's call it health speak or a criminal justice jargon. Um, I've noticed that there are several people here from corrections and DOC. Um, would you raise your hand? if you're from a correctional agency or a DLC, isn't it awkward when we're sitting in a room and they bring in somebody who doesn't speak operations so they don't know the difference between classification and, and what's close custody and why that, that scanner you got is really, really contraband in here. And so when you're talking to us sometimes, Understand that we're, we're language challenged sometimes in corrections and operationally it's the same thing. So I, I'm glad that we're learning our other languages so that we can speak a very common language so that people who are left out of the service mix find a way to fit in. Along with the common language comes a common understanding. And that's what we're seeking to achieve here. Um, thank you for your, your coming. I, I've enjoyed sitting here. Um, I used to really do corrections every day, all day. And I tried to leave on numerous occasions. But this is a lot like the mafia. <laughs> you don't care, as they say, I don't care how you try to leave. They just drag you back in. So I, I'm back in and I'm loving it. This is one of the few places I felt comfortable all day today. Um, for those of you who wonder where I work, I work for the U.S. Forest Service. I manage all the wilderness areas, so 150 million acres of property all over the United States. Um, I haven't had a suit on in months. Um, where I work, you either have to walk or ride a horse. Um, no mechanized transport, no cell phone. Um, I was watching the people in amazement Google and do all of that. Um, they don't even give us a, a, a computer. They just give us a compass and a friendly horse and a bag of carrots. Um, <laughs> so thank you for having me. I love being in civilization. Um, 
Our panelists today will take us from policy to practice. Each of them has learned the common language that enables them to really address the needs of criminal justice populations at their work. As healthcare professionals, they have embraced what's called the triple aim of achieving improved health status for everyone in the communities, high quality health care services, and cost efficient delivery systems. They will tell you why and how what they are doing to achieve some of these aims for the justice involved populations that they manage. The, my first panelist is Dr. Kavita Patel. She's a fellow and managing director in the Engelberg Center for Healthcare Reform at the Brookings Institute, where she leads research on delivery system reforms, healthcare costs, physician payments, and healthcare workforce productivity. Dr. Patel was previously the director of policy for the White House under President Obama and a senior advisor to the late Senator Edward Kennedy. She has testified before Congress several times and is a frequent guest expert on CBS, NBC, and MSNBC, and serves on the editorial board of the Journal of Health Affairs. So you all know you can ask her hard questions, right? Okay. Jonathan Freeman serves as the Chief of Strategy, Regulatory, and Internal Affairs at LA Care Health Plan, the largest public health plan in the nation. In his capacity, he's responsible for strategic planning, government relations, communications, marketing, regulatory affairs, compliance, and community benefits. Prior to joining LA Care Health Plan, Mr. Freeman was with Los Angeles County for more than 25 years and served as Chief Deputy Director for the Los Angeles, oh, lost the page. And he has a really long, resume, but they condensed it down to this, a Department of Health and Public Health and a variety of other policy and management roles. Last but not least is Dr. Amy Botwell. She founded the Collaborative Healthcare Strategies Pursue Work Align where opportunities created by the Affordable Health Care Act, the CMS Center for Innovation, and the Partnership for Patients. Dr. Botwell works at the intersection of all of the best practices and approaches to improve healthcare transitions without exclusive adherence to any one or the other particular models. She's a practicing physician at Newton Wellesley Hospital and attends on medical medicine teaching services at Massachusetts General Hospital and is an instructor in medicine at Harvard Medical School. I am impressed and humbled to introduce you to this group. I would like to say one thing. We're going to try and have a conversation like we're in our living room. Um, we're not going to bounce up and come up here and talk. So we want you to get comfortable. It's after lunch. And without further ado, Dr. Botwell, I'll start with you. Okay. Okay. Thank you.